ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Hello, friends. This is The Lone Ranger. I'd like you to listen to something. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's one of the half that happy people have to play. You know, that's right. People in various parts of the country have different accents, perhaps, or dress a little differently. But the ones with plenty of drive, the go-getters, have one thing in common. They're careful about their diet. They see to it that they eat a good, honest breakfast every day. And a breakfast built around wheat couldn't be better for you. Wheat is real man food. So, bear in mind. Keep on eating your wheat. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I am Silver. Hooray! Kane Dolan, outlaw leader, and his men sprang to their feet and drew guns as they heard hoofbeats approaching their hideout. Have your guns ready, men? Kane glanced through the window and said, Oh, it's all right. That's Jake, the Army scout. Hi, Jake. Hello, Kane. Come on in. You men know Jake. Howdy. Well, you got news for us? Yeah. An escort of six troopers is leaving Fort Lockton this afternoon and heading east along the Butterfield Trail to meet a big wagon train and escort it across the plains. There's a wagon load of army rifles and ammunition they're bringing to Fort Lockton. The major's brother-in-law is wagon master. Ah, ought to be plenty of cash in that wagon train. Including you, there are six of us, but we couldn't Wait a very minute, well. Wait I figure you could get help from the Comanches. Chief Long put a jump at the chance if you offered to let him have the rifles and ammunition. The escort will be on the lookout for an attack and have the wagon stop at protected places. But if we could be sure of surprising them on the plane... Oh, there must be some way now, wait to... a minute. If we showed up as the escort, we'd have complete control of things. Yeah, how could we do that? Yeah, what you got in mind, King? We'd get a few of Longfoot's braves to help us ambush the six troopers, take their uniforms and army horses, and go on to meet the wagon train ourselves. Hey. Later that afternoon, Kane Dolan and his five followers, augmented by as many Indians, waited to ambush the army escort. Chief Longfoot, uh, you and your men take our horses to your village. We ride those with the army brand on them. Then take your braves to the big plains and be ready to attack day after tomorrow at dawn. We'll see to it that the wagons break camp and are on the plains by then. Uh, Here comes the escort. Let them have it. <laughs> The six troopers were taken entirely by surprise. Some of them fell before they had a chance to defend themselves. And within a matter of minutes, all of them had fallen victims to the vicious and ruthless attack. Oh, oh there. Easy. Yeah. Well, they're all done for. Now we'll change clothes with them, drag them back into the brush, and leave on their horses to meet the wagons. All right, let's get busy. Soon, the transfer of clothing was made and the troopers hidden behind the brush. As the outlaws prepared to mount the army horses, Kane looked them over, then chuckled. <laughs> Some of the uniforms don't fit any too well, but nobody will notice. Yeah. Now, remember, my uniform has the chevrons of a sergeant on the sleeves. So be sure to call me sergeant. Right, Sarge. We go back village now. 
Then we ride with hundred braves to big plains. Attack wagons. Good. Adios, Chief. All right, let's go, men. Get up! Get up! Get up. Get up. It was almost sundown when the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the spot where the ambush had taken place. After finding bloodstains on the trail, they looked around and found the troopers, one of whom lived just long enough to tell what happened and to warn them of the attack on the wagon train. Then he died, and the masked man and Indian made graves for the six troopers. When the unpleasant task was completed, the Lone Ranger spoke. Tonto, I'll give you a note to Major Belding at Fort Lockton. He'll remember you, I'm sure. Tell him outlaws, posing as troopers, plan to lead the wagons into a trap. Ah, me tell Major what happened here and what you do. I'll remove my mask and disguise my features. Then, posing as a rancher, I'll join the wagon train to protect the pioneers until help comes. The following morning, as the wagon train moved slowly along the trail... The wagon master, Seth Cushing, driving the lead wagon, suddenly spoke to his wife, Amy. Look, Amy, riders coming toward us. Yes, I see them, Seth. By thunder, they're troopers. I can make out their uniforms. Well, they must be from the fort my brother commands. I reckon so. The major wrote that he'd send an escort to meet us and give us added protection across the big plains. Well, the sight of them makes me feel we're almost there, Seth. Our long journey is almost over. We still have quite a distance to go, Amy. But like you say, it does make you feel like the trip's about over to see the men from your brother's fort. Well, here they come. We better stop and greet them. Whoop! 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 Stop the wagons! Whoop! The outlaws were accepted as a military escort and took their place at the head of the wagon train. Some hours later, the Lone Ranger, disguised as a rancher, watched from hiding as the long line of prairie schooners, headed by the uniformed horsemen, followed the trail through the hills as they made their way toward the big plains beyond. After the last wagon had passed, the Lone Ranger started along the trail behind it. Montilla! A short time later, he overtook the wagon, passing them all until he rode alongside the one driven by the wagon master, Seth Cushing. Easy, fella, easy. Howdy, mister. Reckon you're in charge of this wagon train, aren't you? That's right, stranger. Where'd you come from? Just happened to catch up to you. I'm heading back to the territory near Fort Lockton. Thought I might join your train from here on in. Well, I reckon it's all right, Mr. Uh, Smith will do. Smith, huh? Sure meet plenty by that name. I'm Seth Cushing. This is my wife. I'd be glad to meet you both. If we feel quite important having a military escort. Yeah, I noticed the uniformed hombres, ma'am. Oh, here comes the sergeant now. Easy, boy, easy. Everything all right back here, Mr. Cushing? Fine, fine, sergeant. I'll meet Mr. Smith. He just caught up to the wagons. He's going to travel the rest of the way with us. Howdy, sergeant. Smith, huh? Convenient name, mister. It'll do. Mr. Cushing, it's risky to let a stranger join the wagon train. We already told Smith he could join us, so that's that. Well, have it your way. Get up. Kane quickly joined his men, and as they rode, he discussed the newcomer. You know, Jake, something about that fellow Smith I don't like. Yeah? Why? I don't know. The way he looked at him. I saw him staring at the bullet hole in the breast of this uniform jacket. You think he suspects something? I don't know. But to be on the safe side, I'm going to see that he has an accident. A serious accident. Before the Comanches attack in the morning. Continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. G-Man Jimmy is eight years old. He is strong and he is bold. He can capture outlaws cause he knows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios, all right. The nourishing oat cereal that's shaped like little letter O's. The ready-to-eat cereal with a wonderful toasted oat flavor. 
What's more, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. That's right. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. And these good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So try Cheerios, the famous oat cereal that needs no cooking. And soon you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. The wagon train moved slowly westward, and the rest of the afternoon passed without incident. At sundown, the wagon circled for the night at the edge of the plains. The Lone Ranger decided it was time to warn Seth Cushing. Mr. Cushing, may I have a word with you? Sure. What is it, Smith? It's about those troopers, sir. Well, what about them? They're leading the wagons into a trap. I found now, hold out. on. Those troopers were sent to escort us by Amy's brother. Fact is, the sergeant came to me a while ago and warned me to keep an eye on you. Oh? I'm glad to let you ride with us, but I won't stand for anyone stirring up trouble. You just better forget whatever you started to say. Now, I have work to do. The sergeant suggested we start an hour earlier than usual in the morning. Better turn in for the night. Kingdolin's plan was evident to the Lone Ranger. He wanted to start the wagons early so they'd be moving in a line when the attack came, making it difficult to defend the train against the Indians. Determined to delay the wagons and try to keep them circled until help came, the Lone Ranger crawled through the shadows under the wagons and removed the pin bolts from some of the whipple trees and threw them into the brush. Then he rolled into his blanket outside the circle beside one of the wagons. Later, King Dolan, standing watch with Jake, spoke in a low voice. I had this Indian headband and feather in my saddlebag. Mm -hmm. You take it with you. Crawl in the shadows outside the circle. Use your knife on that stranger and drop the headband. When he's found in the morning, folks will think an Indian sneaked up on you. I hear. Be careful, but get him. Right. You'll never know what happened. The Lone Ranger lay awake, staring into the darkness. Suddenly, he heard the crack of a twig. The sound came from the darkness outside the circle of wagons. Quickly, he slid from the rolled blanket and waited. Then, instantly, the Lone Ranger sprang, grappling with a dark figure who had wielded the knife. Got the knife, me, huh? I'll show you. I'll take it. Wait, wait, you made a mistake. Get to your feet. Begin the light inside the circle. Hold it there. What's going on here? This man tried to knife me. Knife you? Why, he's one of the troopers. Why I didn't try to knife him. I saw an Indian creeping up on him. I followed him. Just as I got there, I heard the blow. This hombre jumped me. Reckon the redskin got away. You're lying. I have a lantern. We'll take a look. All right. Well, knife stuck into your blanket, all right. Don't see how you avoided it. Hey, look there. An Indian headband with a feather stuck in it. My thunder, you're right. An Indian did try to sneak up on you. What's all the excitement? An Indian tried to knife Mr. Smith, Sergeant. He got away, but it looks very bad. If Indians are around here, we'll... We'll check thoroughly, Mr. Cushion, and be alert for indications that other Indians might be nearby. You just leave it up. Come on, Jake. We'll get our horses and look around for that red skin. Sure, Sergeant. The rest of you men might as well get back to your wagons. Right. Oh, mister, reckon it isn't your fault, but somehow you seem to stir up trouble around here. Better move your blanket inside the wagon circle like everybody else. See you in the morning. Well, Mr. Cushing, I... Hmm. Oh, you're trying to convince him now. Before the sun rose, the camp became active again as the pioneers prepared to start the wagon train on its way. Then they learned of the missing boats. They crowded around Seth with their complaints. The Lone Ranger stood listening. Now, wait a minute. Hold on a minute. We can't move the wagons till we get more boats to hold the whipple trees. Oh, hurry, oh. What's the delay, Mr. Cushion? Seth quickly told Kane what the trouble was. Kane's eyes rested on the Lone Ranger. Then he spoke. Those tin bolts were deliberately taken out during the night. Maybe Smith knows something about him, huh? Why should I? Smith, you bear watching. Mr. Cushing, you better get more bolts, fix those wagons so as we can get started. We lost a half hour already. Sun will soon be up. I may have some in my tool chest. We'll soon get the wagons rolling. Don't worry, Sergeant. 
Come on with me, man. We've got to get you up there. Come on. This is me. Oh, good morning, ma'am. Tell me, why did you take those pinballs out? I saw you last night. To delay the wagons and keep them circled. You, you think there might be an attack? I tried to talk to your husband, but I he... know. Seth told me. I don't know why, but I trust you. And I don't trust the sergeant and his men. I've been around soldiers long enough before I married to notice things. They couldn't have trained under my brother, Major Belden. Believe me, Mrs. Cushion, I know they aren't troopers. You must convince your husband of that. And they plan to have the Comanches attack. That's why this so-called sergeant is anxious to have the wagons break camp and start over the plains. Some way to find out for sure. I... Wait, here comes the sergeant. I'll ask him some questions. Yes. Oh, early morning, ma'am. Smith, oh, I want... Sergeant, tell me something. Oh, of course, ma'am. I heard of the major's accident. You know, when his horse fell, I'm... I worried about it. The major's leg was badly injured, wasn't it? Well, yes, I'm mighty bad, but uh, he's getting along all right now. Did Martha, the major's wife, you know, arrive all right? His wife? Oh, yes, yes, ma'am. I'm so glad we'll soon be together again. Won't be long now, ma'am. I have to hurry things up so that we can get started. Get up there. Come on. Well, ma'am? My brother never had an accident, and he isn't married. Well, I found some pinballs in my fit. Smith, if I thought yes, you... you must listen. I just found out for certain the sergeant is an imposter. Uh, Smith tried to tell me that, I asked I... questions about Frank. The sergeant gave the wrong answer, Seth. Please listen to Mr. Smith. Well, Smith, what do you got to say? Briefly, the Lone Ranger told all that had happened. Seth exclaimed... What? You mean they aren't troopers from the Major's Fort? No, they aren't. They're outlaws. They, they... killed the troopers who were on the way to escort you. Wait, wait, you talk different, mister. I, I don't savvy. Never mind that now. Those men plan to lead these wagons into a trap. By thunder, I'll tell everybody. No, wait. I suggest you delay the wagons, keep them in a circle, and place some of your best men near those outlaws. When and if the attack comes, have your men disarm them immediately. Tie them and put them into one of the wagons of the guard. Good idea. We'll take him by surprise. And I sure hope that friend of yours gets here in time with the regiment. In spite of Kane's urging, Seth managed to delay the departure of the wagons until after sunrise. The wagon master had talked quietly to some of the men, who from then on stayed close to Kane's followers. The Lone Ranger, mounted on silver, managed to stay near Kane. Finally... Hey, look! Coming over the rise on the plane! This is it, men! Stop we... that gun! This will take care of you! Even before the Comanches were within range, Kane and his men were surprised and disarmed. While a few of the pioneers hide them, the rest gave their attention to fighting off the approaching Comanches. The pioneers, ready for the attack, because of the Lone Ranger's warning to Seth, fought valiantly. Now watch them. Don't waste bullets. Make each shot count. The Comanches pressed forward, riding at a gallop around the outside of the wagons. Many on both sides fell wounded, and from all appearances, the Indians were rapidly gaining the advantage. Then, look, coming in from both sides, the troopers! Troopers! The troopers, far outnumbering the Indians, moved in from both sides with guns blazing. Those Comanches who weren't dead or wounded had no chance of escape, and before long they were subdued and quickly disarmed. The battle had ended. Later, Tonto and the Lone Ranger listened as the Major verified the story told by the masked man about the ambush of the escort. He finished by saying, Those killers will be taken back and tried for murder along with Chief Longfoot. I hate to think of the result if the outlaw's plan had gone through. Yeah. Thanks to Smith, we found out in time. Smith? The gentleman on the white stallion, Frank. He tried to tell Seth last night, but Seth wouldn't listen to him. We owe our lives to Mr. Smith, and, and I, for one, am grateful. Easy, sir. Easy, boy. Thank you, Mrs. Cushing. We're all thankful to him and his friend Tonto. Why do you call him Smith? That's the name he gave us. Of course, I noticed earlier that he changed his way of speaking. His, his draw suddenly disappeared. It was used only as a convenience, Mrs. Cushing. Well, Tonto and I will ride on ahead, Major, and make certain there are no more Indians waiting to attack. Adios, everybody. Bye. 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 Come up. Come. Mr. Smith is such a fine man. Somehow I trusted him from the very first. And his name isn't Smith, Amy. And you had every reason to trust him. He's the finest American I know. And one of whom the West is mighty proud. Who is he, Major? Yes, Frank, for heaven's sake, get to the point. Just who is that man? He usually wears a black mask. But at present, his features are disguised. Amy, you'll hear a lot more about him out here. He's the Lone Ranger.
Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.